Okay, today we're going to look at the triangular numbers formula and how this basically looks at the number of dots that you can count if you were to put them into a triangular array. So here's where we start off. We start at, what if, um, we always have to start with the initial value, so suppose n equals 1, therefore t of 1 is 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2, which is 2 over 2 equals 1, and that corresponds to one dot here. The next pattern you get is you increase the number of dots in the row by 1, so you get two dots here, and then you add another. So you get three dots in total. This corresponds to case two. If you have T2, that's two times two plus one divided by two. Two plus one, this cancels out, you get a three. So this is T1, this is T2. And let's just keep looking at some more examples, shall we? T3 equal 3 times 3 plus 1 over 2, 3 times 4 over 2, 12 over 2, which is 6. So that's right, because then we have 3 dots at the bottom, 2 dots in the middle, and 1 dot at the top. This is 3, 1, 6. And just keep continuing. T4 equals 4 times 4 plus 1 divided by 2. 2 times, sorry, that's 2 times 5. So it's 10. So then T4 becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 10. And we can keep this at infinitum. I'm going to do the next one now, T5, just by drawing the things, dots together. Five dots here, four dots in the next row, three dots in the next row, two dots here, and one there. And we can keep continuing. And notice one thing is that as you keep increasing, as you keep going from the bottom, to the top row, the number of dots increases by around n. So if you were to describe the triangular numbers as a recurrence relation, in other words, you go and describe one triangular number in terms of the previous other triangular numbers, um, t sub n would equal t sub n minus 1 plus 1. And this could be proven very nicely through induction in the following way. So you need to assume the base case. So then we have, let's see, T1 plus 1. No, I'm sorry. This should be valid for, yeah, for n is greater than or equal to 2. Let's see. So we have the base case, n equals 2, t2 equals t1 plus 1. t1 is simply 1, that's the starting value we have. 1 plus 1 I screwed up somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did I do that? I'm sorry. Recurrence relation is not Tn equals Tn minus 1 plus 1. It is Tn equals Tn minus 1 plus n. Okay, that's where I made the mistake. So then this is 2. This is 2. This is 1 plus 2, which equals 3. That's the base case done. 
Now we assume the inductive hypothesis that for some integer k, tk minus 1 holds. Uh, is it? Let me go and draw this here just to distinguish this from now. Inductive hypothesis. We assume gk minus 1 equals k minus 1 times k plus 1 divided by 2. So now, if we were to do our litmus test here, tk equals k minus 1 times k, what am I doing? k minus 1 plus 1, I'm sorry. So that would be k. So you have this here, divided by 2, plus k here. And now just to get the result that we want to show sorry please give me a minute oh okay yes yeah to get the result that we want we have to do a bit of algebraic trickery multiply this at the top and the bottom by two over two and then proceed to do some factoring after that. Tk equals, I'm just going to get the 1 half here. So then this is k times k minus 1 plus 2k. This half is going to be very nice. So all we care about is this expression inside here. So I'm going to write this out here. k times k minus 1 plus 2k. And I can factor out a k from here from both terms of k, k minus 1 plus 2, which ends up giving us k times k plus 1. So this is essentially k times k plus 1, all divided by 2 which is what we want to prove by induction. And now the last thing I do before I end the video, we can actually geometrically derive how we get the triangular numbers formula in terms of the areas of rectangles. In this geometric case, this only looks at, um, this only looks at manipulating around two copies of T4 two copies of the fourth triangular number, which you can literally think of as like two triangles with dots, and then you combine them around. So we this is a length four, and this is a length four. This is a base. The base of the triangle here is four. The height of this triangle here is four as well. But then for this here, oh, I forgot a dot here as well. My apologies. The height of this triangle is 4. The length of this triangle, or the base, is 4 as well. However, unfortunately, the dimensions of, <clears throat> of this triangle are not a square. It's actually a rectangle. And... Let me elucidate it if I go and perhaps some color coding, as Michael Penn masterfully does much better than me. Let me just put it over here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, one. Boom.
They're all combined together. And if this is a bit like too still for you, you can look at um, some visual simulations of getting these two triangle dots, triangular dots, rotating them and then combining them to form each other. There's many, many of you, those YouTube shorts that show this very beautiful result right now. But if we count the length and base of this rectangle now, this is five and this is four. So if we generalize, <coughs> excuse me, if we generalize that for the t nth number, because remember this 4 corresponds to an n, <coughs> uh, let's see, how do I show it like very easily? Sorry, sorry, please give me a moment. <clears throat> so the area of this, this four corresponds to an N, same with N over here. And this is just N and N plus one. The area of the rectangle equals n times n plus 1. But if we want to split it into the area of a triangle, we just use the formula for the area of a triangle, which is basically 1 half base times height. And so we just simply take our result and divide it by 2. And that's it. I kind of like wing this, but overall, I hope you enjoyed at this look of the triangular numbers. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.